Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. No, you know Kelvin oh, Key also, ah? Yeah. The whole internet, the whole Facebook world know him now, ah. Largest crowd, ah, 20,000, ah. Okay, we are live. So time to share our post on our personal walls. All right. Okay, let me go to share. Four different okay. professionals, all specializing in different topics to assist the SME community. So if you are SME, you need to get out of this ring of destruction. It's time to come and tune in to our show, Cut, Change and Challenge for today. But first, let me share my video on my personal page first. Okay. I'm also doing that. Video gets started right away. Four professionals on Cut, Change and Challenge. Okay, done. Very good. And the reason news we all know, Hertz being the largest car rental company in the US, filed for bankruptcy. 16,000 people uh, working for the company now have no job. I think this is not the only company that is going to end up with no, no business to do. I think more and more mm -hmm. will come. Uh, to hit the market. Of course, uh, US is one of those big guys that has a lot of overheads. And and because they never changed the business model over the years, and then got disruptors like Uber and uh, Lyft in the US. Lah. Lyft is not here. So it starts to take over some of the market share. Now, I find it a bit sad because let's say big company like Hertz, ah, they die. So they bring along the supply chain. First of all, the automotive company that supply them will also kena because they cannot sell car now. Then, because they, they, they fire 16,000 people, they got a lot of stocks, have to liquidate those cars, which means thousands of thousands of cars is going to be flooded into the pre-owned market and it's going to throw price to just dispose of these assets. Uh. So how are you going to sell your car when the other guy selling the car 30% cheaper than you? So there's going to be a big problem there. But it's necessary that we understand that business is very tough right now and we have to cut change and challenge that's why we came up with these topics four different professionals from different disciplines to share our expertise experience to bring you out of this crisis and i think hey hi alex welcome and see your wife <laughs> okay and that will be an interesting topic that we have today uh, let me check if my team whether blasted on my Facebook profiles. Okay, so we're going to start with something simple. Let's do a quick survey today. How many of you here today have seen at least one of our shows? One of our shows. Either one. If you have seen either one of our shows, please type the word yes. If you have never seen four of us, doing any facebook live please type no okay so let's do a quick survey have you seen any of us yes no means no so you've seen some of the shows please in the comment box type yes if this is the first time you're here seeing us for the first time just type no that means you have not seen before and we're here today to cari makan. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know why this topic is important? Because this morning, I was with a the company doing consulting work for the management team. And one thing I actually share with them is you have to have thick face to ask for the business. Because if you don't have thick face to ask for the business, you're not going to get the business because people assume that you don't want, you're not so keen, not so sincere, not so hardcore for it, and they just don't care. So we have to change the mindset where if you want the business, ask for it. I did another coaching earlier with a logistic company. Same thing also. I asked them to talk to the owners that they serve, right? What can I do to earn your business? Mm -hmm. So that is a very important question. We have to lower the ego, throw away our past experiences, and just let people know, mm -hmm. I want to cari makan. So that's why we start with it. Four of us actually are here to cari makan. Cari makan. But first, but first let me 
have to give you some values, share with you some secret. So let's start with our my first question for tonight. Lah. So businesses cannot grow right now, cannot even survive, cannot even hire mm. people. But mm. what is the first thing they must do? I recommend them to cut. Cut unnecessary expenses out. Lah. So with that, I'd like to throw the first questions to Lily, the cut specialist. Okay. Okay. What are the three most important things that a company must cut right away in order to conserve cash? Okay, thank you, Hanzo. All right, so I am an accountant and over this MCO period, uh, I have worked with uh, you know, my clients and also the public, you know, uh, we have done over a hundred financial projections. The purpose of us doing these financial projections is that we want to know exactly and exactly where to cut and how much to cut, not simply, simply cut. Yeah. So what we work with them is uh, uh, getting their numbers, looking into their costs, and most importantly, looking into their break even numbers, and then so that we know exactly cut how much, then only you can tie through or survive. Yeah. So let me bring you to some slides that I've prepared. Uh, in these slides, I'm going to do a share a case study because uh, at the end of March, okay, this client that we you know uh, we did for them, uh, they took action very early. Yeah. Before end of March, they already know that they needed to cut because they have a big overhead. So uh, let's I like share screen uh, share with you. Uh, this is a very important slide because you don't know how much cash you can survive. You're going to do all the wrong cash right. projection and you may all not right. be able all to right. do many things. So very important. Yep. Okay. Are you able to see, see my slides? Okay. Right. Okay. This is our team of accountants in the office. Uh, in vision is that every SME can become large. Uh, because of this COVID-19, uh, I think every SME must survive first before they can become large. <laughs> yeah. Becoming large is secondary already. Okay, this is a real case study that Yuvin has done for one of our clients. Okay. This client is in the uh, building industry, construction, interior design and building industry. So when they came to us, uh, sometime when the MCO started, they cannot tahan. My overhead, right, for a month is quarter million. Yeah, and then because I'm in the construction industry, I cannot do work from home. There is no way I can build from home. There's no billing. There is no cash. So what am I going to do? So we sit down with them. We look at their numbers. So these were their numbers before MCO. The total cost per month is half of a quarter million. And then we zoom into the three big areas which take up this cost. Number one is their worker cost. Their casual workers, 175,000. Number two is their office staff, 50,000. And number three, dine line, line lah, uh, rental, office rental, factory, et cetera, 21,000, et cetera. A quarter million a month. So when we went in, what we did with them is that we get a lawyer to come in as well. We get a lawyer to come in. Uh, we do uh, employee cost optimization because obviously, based on this slide, the biggest cost is workers. We needed to handle that. And then during MCO, what we did is that we managed to bring down the workers' cost from 175000 a month to 20000 So basically what we were doing is that we are you know, um, keeping everybody, just feeding everybody to tie through this period. Yeah. And then next we look at office staff. Yeah. Some office staff could still do work from home, you know, to do up their project with us. So we pay them accordingly to their productivity. Some of them, we pay them one day's work or sometimes two days work, etc. And then, of course, the rental, etc. We ask for discounts and all. So all in all, during MCO, 31st March, we immediately reduced the total cost to just 62000 a month from 264000 Okay. Now the MCO is slowly being lifted. See MCO lah. Slowly, you know, the sites are open, etc. Can slowly get back to work. Yeah, still we needed to reduce the cost because 
um, based on the economic uh, that is that is uh, currently. So we have already the client has already you know uh, expecting lower sales, some cancellation of jobs, etc. So from two hundred sixty four now. MPO, we reduce it by half already. Yeah, so I would like to focus on the three areas we did cost cutting from them. So luckily, this cost cutting started on first of April. Not so chalat. We didn't have to pay, uh, you know, the full two hundred and quarter million in the month of uh, April during the MCO. Yeah. Okay, for example, going going into the okay. So what we did exactly with them, uh, the advice of the lawyers. Uh, so that we ensure we comply with uh, industrial relations and the code of uh, corporate harmony, is that we change all the daily workers and outsourced workers, uh, we change them as buffers. Yeah, and then we reduce workers or reduce work days to four days per week instead of six days per week. So, for example, some people only get one day one day pay per week. Some get two day pay per week. Some day some get three, depending on what time of what type of work they do. So totally no work. We pay them one day a day, uh, to just uh, just to keep them lah, to to just to feed them, yeah. And no overtime now after MCO. There's no overtime. We make full use of our uh, normal working hours because overtime is one point five times uh, the rate. And then we we advise the client to use the one two three mentality versus the three two one mentality. This one we learn it from the big four. You know, in the big four, we were given an option you know one person get two persons pay do three persons job yeah some companies three person get two persons pay do one person's job so in times like this right we you know we tell all the workers that everyone has got to work harder work harder so that we can take care of ourselves yeah then is being more productive lah. So in terms of staff salaries, um, in terms of staff salaries, like I said, during MCO, we really cut down to minimal based on what they do, work from home. And then after MCO, we bring it up. Yeah? Um, we created an option plan for them to pick a pay cut across board for 12 months, or they can have an option to go on contract for six months, six months contract. And then the finance team, the HR team, the four people, now, now down to just one in-house and then the rest of the work is outsourced to Intune. So the finance cost is reduced from 18K to 12K per month. And during the period of time, because you know, we can't do much work, so we get them the online accounting system, we build the foundations and then we are preparing ourselves to, you know, for, for the future like, when it gets busy because now during MCO it was so free, so we did all this foundation work. Like. So there were a few other things that uh, um, you know we work with the client to uh, to implement. Mainly is to outsource even their workers, etc., to outsource because even in with outsourcing, there is a thirty days credit term. Yeah, and you know we apply all the wage subsidy, etc. So yeah, so when we work on a cost cutting, uh, we use a financial tool that can give us instant financial plan. You know, from the instant plan, we are able to see uh, where to cut, how much to cut only enough. If simply cut or don't cut enough, also cannot. So for those that is not in that if they needed money to tie through just a period of time of uh, tight cash flow, we also introduce them to SME loans, etc. Yeah, and then for those that need to pivot their business from offline to online, you know, we go to. Uh, Grandmaster Hanzo, Sales Ninja, can help them to do that. And then we look at all the government subsidies that is available. We apply everything that is possible. Yeah, everything that is possible that the government is uh, providing, uh, you know, make in full use uh, of all the help that is given. So this is a real case study that we have done. So like I mentioned just now, uh, in doing that, we have an instant financial tool. So nowadays, right, everybody like things instant. I want it now, I want it now. I want to know the results now. But if I cut here, how? What is the results now? So what we did was we created, okay, we created a tool that can give instant results that help us in our financial coaching when we were advising the client. Okay, I'm going to put up an Excel worksheet here. Let me see. 
Okay. I'm going to put out like Excel worksheet. Okay. So this is the financial modeling tool uh, which can give instant results. So in this, uh, there's, in this one sheet, we, we entered some of this information, you know, like the sales per month, during MCO, how much they can, uh, they are able to sell. After MCO, situation is still very slow. There is still expected 50% drop in sales, etc. And then we put in all the costs. Of course, here for simplicity, we just down it to just three types of costs. Lah. And then it is normal cost and cost cutting and a few other variables at the bottom. So what I wanted to demonstrate with you is that, so we work with the business owner instantly. So, so this is a situation if they don't cut costs. Okay, if this client don't cut costs, this will how the cash flow would look like. Because they have got some cash in the bank, you know, in the first month, still can tahan. You know, if you look at this cash balance, they got money. But the cash will run out in three months time, meaning they only have three months runway if they don't do something about it. So when we see situations like this, we will say, okay, you better go and take a loan quickly. Yeah. So, and then this is the break-even line. Yeah, anything below this break-even line means cash already negative already. So, when we put in all the cost-cutting measures, and in this case, we assume a 13% cost, look at how the situation differs. Yes, look at the cash flow. So, immediately, because cost is something within our control, which we can cut almost immediately. Yeah. So immediately when we can cut costs, this is how the cash flow would look like. There is not a month that it won't go to negative if we act fast and cut quickly and cut enough. So in each of these exercises, we will, we will actually simulate multiple scenarios with our client. If I cut 10%, I'll go. I'll go. Then we will the simulation. Okay, not enough. If I cut 20%, is it enough? If not enough, then how much should I cut? So we do this, we use this tool to simulate instant results. And then what is a very important point, if for those who haven't watched our previous uh, sharing on break-even, so break-even is the most important point. So in this business, right, this is what we tell the client. If you don't cut, minimum one month, you must collect 108,000 cash. Then only you can cover all your costs. But if you take a 30% cut across board, you only need to collect 75000 to be able to ngam ngam ho. So these are some of the things that we work through with our client. Financial projection, where to cut, how to cut, and we give a financial coaching as well and also pointing them to the right direction. Okay, you should go and take a loan. You should go and apply all the uh, subsidies, etc. Yeah, I think um, that's all my sharing, Hanzo. Fantastic. So just curious, how many of you know what she just talked about? <laughs> so if you're not from financial background and looking at Excel sheets with a lot of numbers, right? It's a pain for for micro and small medium businesses. Even for last one, right? The boss only one dashboards. Most of the things is done by the finance people. And that's why it's important to outsource financial work uh, to the professionals uh. <laughs> so i hope yeah, you, yeah. Have, you have a uh, you have a workshop coming on right uh yes i do uh for myself i do a one-to-one -one coaching later we'll put out a link for people to you know uh for people to uh, uh sign up Yes, uh, our workshop will be, you know, at the moment we are doing one to one because we have done a public one before. In the public workshop, like everyone will share their finances. Okay, okay, I think I better not tell, you know, it is a bit, I find that people find it a bit weird, you know, to share their company financial information. Then I, I find that, okay, okay, it's not working. I think on financial uh, money things, because I ask sensitive questions, tell me how much you have in your bank account. Oh, yeah, I cannot share that. Yeah, so now I do. Personal one on one, one on one financial coaching uh, with using the tool. Great. I got a question here by Dato William. He says, cutting costs is good, but how do we scale back up later? Okay, so Lindy's core competency uh, is financial optimization. That's where we have cut change and challenge. 
William. So we cut first, huh? then okay, got cash ready. Then we start changing. Then after change ready, we challenge. That's where we scale back up. So it's a it's a fasa, it's a phase uh, that we go through as business owners. And that's why we move to the second part. Now we cut ready. So we have some conserve conserve cash. And next thing I want to talk about today is how do we raise funds fast? How do we get money into a bank account without the help of banks? What other alternative ways are there for a business owner to raise funds? Because I get this question all the time. Huh? You know, Hanzo customers don't pay me, I cash flow problem. Banks don't want to borrow me. Bank, bank uh, say finish, SRF finish ready. So move me to AES. AES also don't know what is it. AES sounds like a camera. Lah. <laughs> so after that, uh, they are stuck. Lah. So that's where I want to move to topic number two, still in the cutting. How do you raise funds fast? But quick survey, lah. how many of you here wants more money? So you want more money, okay? So if you want more money, please type the word eight. That means you need more cash in your business and in your life. Please type the number eight. Okay, so I will start off by typing because I want more money, man. I want more cash. I want more cash injection. I want investors. I want people to buy out my companies. Hey, I want all those things. So if you are also like me, you want more cash, please type the number eight. That is the second topic. How do you raise funds without borrowing money from the banks? Okay, and that's the second topic. So a lot of people are, so one cash. Jennifer wants cash. John wants cash. Josie wants cash. Good. So this topic is for you, okay? So with that, I'll move to William. How do we raise funds without the help of the banks? Where do we get money? Hi, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Hanzo, for inviting me to do this session with uh, all the gurus, very uh, makan uh, professionals. Okay, uh, I've uh, done uh, 50 over coaching sessions uh, over the last two months, okay, I stopped on the 12th of May because that's the day I tell everyone, my team, my partners, from 13 onwards, we are not on MCO mode anymore because MCO mode is very depressing. MCO mode is very demotivating. Everybody is using MCO, MCO, MCO for many, many uh, reasons, many, many excuses for not moving on, for not paying uh, fees, okay? So, uh, from 13 May onwards, okay, we started uh, to go on the pre-MCO mode. That means everything we do, we will drop the MCO word, okay? In terms of our engagement, in terms of our fees, and also how we help clients, okay? So, and we noticed that when we go on that mode, clients, we also manage to influence them. And they also say, yeah, I think you're right. Let's go on a full mode. Okay, so when it comes to fundraising, okay, there's two sides of the coin. One, entrepreneurs will, hard, will find it very hard to raise money now because the market is bad. Okay, but if you look at investor perspective, okay, I have a few calls over the last uh, two weeks. Okay, if you are managing people's money, okay, fund manager, asset managers, you will get worried as well because for the last five months or six months, you have not invest any money, okay? And your investor, those people who put money in your fund might do a capital call. Hey, why not I take my money back? I can invest myself, okay? So there's always two sides of the coin, okay? So as an entrepreneur, okay, there's never a good or bad timing. It's whether you want to do it or not, okay? So over the last uh, two weeks, okay, since uh, May 13, uh, I managed to sign new deals already, okay? And the, the engagement is actually based on uh, PMCO terms and fees, okay? And clients are already back into that mode to say that, okay, let, let's go for it, okay? So back to Hanzo's question, how do you raise money now? And how do you raise money fast, okay? I think fast is the key word, okay? And if you look at the market now, okay, the fastest way to raise money is go to those people who have done business with you, your business associate, your existing investors, okay, your customer, your supplier, okay. So let's start with your existing investors, okay. If you have ready investors, and for the last uh, few months you have done, you have shown that to your investors that you have done a lot despite the despite the MCO or despite COVID nineteen, they will feel that yes, this is the right company. I will continue to support this company, okay. 
Then next, when you have run out of resources, when the bank don't borrow you, next, you might consider your supplier or your customer because number one, your supplier has done business with you and if you go fast or if you go down, they will lose a customer, right? And if you look at your customer perspective, if your customer has been engaging you and if you are in B2B business, okay, your customer need your service or your products so that they can produce their product or services. Okay, so this is a time where you you can actually reach out to your supplier and customer and see that hey, this is the situation and I need funds, I want to grow my business. Are you in with me or not? Okay. Right, so these are the first two. And the third one is all your business associates, your business partners, those who have done deals with you, those who are your agents, okay, okay, and your distributors, okay. So these are the people who say yes, I Everybody is looking for a leader. Everybody is looking for a driver. Okay, so if you can take the lead, I'm sure there's a lot of people are willing to bet on the right horse to move forward. Because I I, I listened to a webinar two days ago, and the speaker speaks one point that I keep bringing in my mind. Okay, after every crisis, there will be a climax. Okay, so can you imagine that? Okay. Uh, if everybody stop investing, where are all the, where the money goes? The money will stay in the bank, okay? And every investment guru will tell you if the money is in the bank, means you are losing money, okay? Because inflation now, especially now, okay, is moving fa growing faster than, okay? Listen, I I tuned into uh, uh, Gavin T's uh, webinar yesterday. So there's a Chinese. Uh, guy uh, sharing about the China situation. Okay, they said for the last four months or five months, Chinese deposit has reached almost a trillion plus RMB. So he forecast that after the MCO, after the lockdown, either they'll invest or they'll spend their money. Okay, so as an entrepreneur, this is the right time for you to leverage on all these assessors or savings in a bank account and when the market turns, your product, your service are there, okay, to tap on. And you tell investors, okay, this is the best time to raise money and expand my product and services, okay. You cannot tell investors, okay, I want to maintain status quo, okay. In this world, there's only up, you go, either you go up or you go down, okay. You can't maintain status quo, all right. So the only way is to be aggressive, okay, not defensive, okay. So investors like to hear all this. Investor wants to bet on the right horse. Investor wants to bet like people like Hanzo with full of energy, full of passion, right? Because nobody wants to wake up and, and talk to someone and say, oh, shit, today is bad. My friend don't pay me. My banker is bad. My landlord asking for payment. So investor wants to listen to like nice tune. Oh, I got this sales. Wow, I got this, all this. I just closed a deal. Okay. So these are the signs that uh, you must show to investors. Okay. All right. So the, if you look at how, okay, I can I can share a few screen which I have done for various workshop over the last uh, few days, uh, or few weeks, sorry. Um, let me see. Uh. Um, Hanzo, can I press the share screen? How do I share screen? Yeah. Can you just press share screen, and then okay. the screen will pop up my side. I will I will put it into the screen now. So if you got question okay. about cutting costs, you can pop to Lily. You got question about fundraising, corporate finance, mergers, acquisitions. Those are William's specialty. Uh. Okay. Can you see the slides now? You can. Okay, slides up already, William. Okay, so this is what uh, I always tell people, okay? For every entrepreneur, money is never enough, okay? Regardless of your stages, regardless your startups or growth stage or even mature companies, you need more money. Everybody need to raise new money, okay? If you look at banks, if you look at telco companies, okay, unicorns especially, Billions and billions point unicorn. So where's the where's the end? Okay. So for after a few the uh, blunders done by all these unicorn, now investors are back to basic. Okay. Show me sales. Show me your customer. Who are your customers? How can you 
reach your customers. Okay, so if you if you keep selling big stories like the market is big, my market is huge. There's so many people waiting to 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 sign up my service or buy my products. You need to justify where. Okay, and for for to raise money fast and effective now. Okay, number one. You need to know what is the objective. Okay, so for example, here I, I still read one. There's only two ways. Okay, one, you need to raise money to survive. Okay, to save your business. Second, you need to grow your company, and you need to grow it fast. You can acquire business. There's so many distressed uh, companies out there now. You can buy away your competitors. You have so you can grow your market share quickly and expand the new market. Right, so these are the rational to tell investors. Okay, of course, when you raise money, even though you are trying to raise money to survive, you must portray a growth story. Okay, your equity story. How do you grow your business? Okay, right next, and uh, where's the money? Okay, so like I mentioned just now, okay, the triple F is always there. So look out for it, and um, to be to be to be very focused. Okay, look out for. Business associate, your strategic partners, those who have done business with you, like your supplier and customers. Okay, um, equity crowdfunding platform is quite far, uh, quite active nowadays, especially the uh, for for fundraise below one to two million. Okay, and of course, uh, P two P lending. So these are fast for personal loan. Also, if you need a little capital, then P two P lending uh, platform will be right for you. And the rest are typical venture cap PE and hedge fund, okay, family office uh, and FIs. Okay, so in a nutshell, okay, what you need to do, okay, number one, ask yourself, are you ready? All right, is your term sheet ready? Is is your financial statement ready? Is your audit or management account ready? Because if you do, uh, you don't have all these documents, okay, you will delay the process, okay. And of course, if you have those documents in place, you need to show investor your ambition and drive what's your story who are your board your management team okay your structure your financial information past present future all right okay and i think more importantly is uh how do you manage your investors okay what's the exit strategy for them is it short term mid term or long term state it clearly to investors okay if you need the bridging loan to help you to pass through these three months stay there the exit is within six months and how do you repay them okay so make sure you're very clear and uh, i notice a lot of uh, entrepreneurs uh, always make one mistake okay um, whenever we, i ask them how much you want to raise there's never a straightforward answer they always tell me um, let me think about it oh i haven't figured it out yet so they are always uncertain, okay? So this is the fundamental no, because if I'm an investor, I say, hey, why are you wasting my time? You, you can't even know how much you need, how much you want, okay? So I think that every entrepreneur must be very clear, okay? And uh, always state your amount clearly and your term sheet clearly, okay? A lot of people always say, oh, let's discuss when we are ready, okay? But investors are pampered with choice nowadays, okay? Those with cash are flooded with deals, okay? So you need to be very sure how much you need, why you need it, and what is the exit for investors, okay? I think with all these uh, key pointers in place, there's no guarantee that you can raise funds, but it increases your chances of closing the deal okay so try your best uh, to portray that and of course uh, learn from hanzo the energy and that will attract investors by itself okay that's all for my story very good very good if anyone interested to buy my company always for sale <laughs> 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 okay so very good now if you're uh so so far what we have discovered is gotta conserve your cash gotta know how much cash flow you have to sustain for how many months where to cut how to cut and next thing is you gotta raise funds from all kinds of channels and i like the saying where people want to raise funds don't even know the amount it's like i ask uh, a salesperson right what do you want to achieve how much you want to earn as much as possible it's not a good answer you gotta be specific <laughs> How much do you want? It's like a sales director asking the sales staff, how much can you bring in this week? 
as much as possible, boss. It's not a good answer. Lah. So basic communication skill and target setting, you got to be specific, you got to be measurable, you got to have a number in mind. Now, after we have some cash, we raise some money. Now we're like, whew, I can, I can survive this. How do I cari makan? So work from home is a new norm. My company right now, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is working and Tuesday, uh, Thursday, Saturday is working from home. Now, a lot of companies, like even though this morning uh, I was with a public user company and I share with them a new sales strategy. But this new sales strategy requires them to change the KPI because I give them a new task. And they like, uh, they got stuck halfway because they don't think they want to do it and they don't know how to do it. Now. So I'm going to get a KPI specialist here to tackle this scenario. You want, for example, one of the strategy yeah, we always share with our clients is get the whole company to sell. Let's say you got only 10 salespeople, but you got 50 staff. So you got 50 salespeople technically. You know? And how do you turn all 50 into salespeople? And that's where I come in. Uh. But in order to do that, you need to change the infrastructure. And I always re recommend my clients, you got to operationalize and formalize it. If you formalize, people will take it seriously. If you just, if you just communicate, people are not going to do it because ah, this one doesn't affect my KPI, doesn't affect my bonus. What's the point? Okay, so with us, KPI specialist Wilson, please comment on how companies uh, can change their KPI to fit into the new norm and what kind of KPIs can they set uh, for the new norm. And for micro and SME, you don't know what is KPI. So I think Wilson will also explain to you first what is KPI. So Wilson, all yours. Hi, good evening. Thank you so much, Hanzo, for giving me uh, this opportunity to share. Uh, I've been sharing a lot uh, during this uh, three months MCO period. I've been organizing a lot of uh, webinars almost every week, you know, we more than 30 uh, webinars. Okay, so uh, let's understand what is KPI first. A lot of people, they have a misperception on KPI. Uh, I still remember when we had uh, our exhibition at the uh, KCC, uh, Hanzo was there although. So one of the guys come to me and say, what are you doing? We, I told her that, okay, we are KPI specialist. You know what she, what her reaction? She said, wow, scary, you know? So when you mention KPI to the employee, in their mind is, yeah, I think my boss want to catch me. My boss want to come and catch my mistake, right? <laughs> so to some employee, even to the extent that my boss want to catch my mistake so that they do not need to give me bonus. <laughs> that is the wrong perception, right? So uh, I even heard, from a boss saying that a boss himself uh, is saying that, hey, I think this year uh, we do not want to do yet an appraisal. Uh. I said, why, why, why do you want to do this? Because uh, really, uh, all my employees all high, uh, I have no money to pay bonus. How can I give the answer to all my employees? Oh, something wrong, right? So the, the bosses are worried to have KPI and the employee also worry about KPI. Why? It's because people have a wrong understanding of kpi why kpi okay kpi is for you to you know like hanzo said ask for it if you want you ask for it okay what you want your employee to do you have a company vision right you want to be the number one then you tell your investor when you tell william right you have to be very inspiring vision right william i want to be number one in malaysia in five years time i want to be number one in asia in 10 years time, for example, right? Medium, okay. Wow. But when you say you are number one, you are number one, how can you justify your number one, right? Based on what? You can say you're number one, but your competitor, your customer may not agree with you. You say number one. Next thing is you need to do is you need to list down how do you measure number one? How do you justify number one? Based on what? Based on revenue? Based on number of clients? Based on uh uh locations or what you know so you have to justify that once you have the vision when you have the goal then you need to tell your employee this is our company vision and these are our goal i want you to be a part of it you need to inspire your employee you need to manage your employee you need to tell them okay i need your help without you all we cannot achieve our vision we no way we can uh, uh move towards our goals so i need your help so KPI is for you to move from point A to point B. 
Meaning that you are make, let's say you are making 10 million now. You want to make 20 million point A to point B. That's a gap. So the gap is the area that you, you need to address. That is how you do cascading, you know, from your corporate goal to the departmental goal to the employee's uh, goal. So what I'm going to share with you is uh, just a very, very brief, uh, briefly how to do KPI. Okay. So I'm going to share the screen now. Just a moment. Okay, I share screen. Okay. So once Hanzo enabled it, then you can see. Okay, good. So just very simple. A lot of company, especially SME, right? Um, you do not know how to set KPI. It's very simple. I just show you a very, very simple way. For example, you has you have already set your goal for this year. You have to uh, let's say cash flow, revenue, profitability, quality, efficiency, customer satisfaction. You have all these goals, right? So I just pick one example here. Uh. Now everyone talk about cash flow. A lot of people don't understand. Uh, the come they cannot align the KPI to the proper goal, right? Cannot align, cannot think. How what should I set for my employee? How do I align the employee direction, right? So very simple. I show you example here. Cash flow. If you want to achieve a cash flow, then what your finance department should do, right? Your finance department should talk to your supplier in terms of payment terms. This is what Lily can help you, right? So you set the KPI that you should do. Then you need to talk to bank, talk to investor, and so on. That financial department. Then how about sales department? Sales department, you need to make sure you negotiate the payment term with your customer to make sure you have correction on time, right? Sales department. Then talk about purchasing department. Purchasing department, you need to talk to the supplier to negotiate, to negotiate the price of the raw material of the of the goods. Okay, operation department. Operation department, you need to make sure your processing time, not the processing time, how fast you produce. Because if you produce slow, you will not able to deliver the customer, and your customer will not pay you. You only get your payment when you deliver. After you deliver. You have to make sure your product are quality. You don't deliver a wrong product. You don't deliver a uh, defects product. Is it? How about logistic department? Okay, logistic. So logistic, how far you deliver? It's a quality also. Okay, warehouse, the stock control. How you control your stock? Is it overstock or understock? If you don't, if you do not have enough stock, then how are you going to sell? You cannot sell. You cannot get money, right? If you overstock, all your cash is stuck in the stock, right? So it is so simple that you just set your goal. Okay, set your goal, and from your goal, you define for each department that what you should do in order to help the company to achieve the cash flow that you want. This is just one of the example. I'm not able to show you everything. You know, is uh, uh, KPI uh, can be very complex, can be uh, uh, applied to many industry, different industry, different department. KPI doesn't mean only for sales. Okay, it's, it can be for any department. So. For now, uh, if you want to uh, get to know more, you can. Uh, Hanzo going to share with you lah. You come to our uh, webinar on this Saturday. It's a free webinar. We are here to help the SME, so you can uh, talk to us later. Uh, we also have a, a QR code here. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing now. So what I want to do is uh, instead of sharing too much, I want to hear from uh, the floor or maybe from Hanzo. What are the questions? It, so that it is more relevant to you. If I want to talk about KPI, I can talk to you. Over two hours, you you bought to die, you see. So, if I just want to know, you want to know. Very simple. If you have a vision, if you have a goal, first thing you need to have a good leadership, right? You need to lead your team. You need to get your HOD. They need to believe in what you believe. Okay, they are here for you. They follow you. They are not here for your money. If they are here for your money, they are not your. You are not inspiring leader. You need to inspire your team, and you need to get your team to understand why is KPI. Why KPI is so important? How they can help the company to grow, right? How they can contribute. Then eventually, then you reward your employee when your company make money. Then how can you reward your employee fairly? Uh, that is the point, right? So uh, over to you, Hanzo. If you have any more questions, I'm more than happy to share here. What what is the what is the necessary KPI for people working from home? Eh? So for example, okay, uh, from home. Uh, uh, question, uh. So hmm. for example, my what are my KPI is my all my messages, emails must be replied in one hour. Okay. Is that a KPI? And if, if it's not a KPI, and how do I improve this KPI? Okay. So, uh, for example, uh, KPI, uh, you need to come from the very broad view. You have to come from the corporate objective first. 
maybe first thing, your objective is to achieve customer satisfaction. Okay, that is a corporate goal. In order for you to achieve customer satisfaction or customer retention, then you need to sit down with all your employees, or, or, sorry, all your HOD to understand how you can help the company to achieve customer satisfaction. So what you mentioned here, respond time is just one of the elements. That is what we call uh, leading KPI. Leading KPI. We have two types of KPI. One is uh, lagging KPI, one is leading KPI. Lagging KPI is the end result. What you want to achieve. What you want to achieve is to achieve customer satisfaction, right? So in order for you to achieve the customer satisfaction, you need to have a list of leading KPI. For example, especially for junior people, right? Junior people, yes, you need to have a leading KPI. For example, your response time had to be, you know, within one hour. For example, the day I called, uh, last time I called to Agoda, you know, Agoda. So Agoda responded very fast. So every now and then I share to a lot of people, Agoda had a fantastic service, you know, customer service. That is response time, very important. So for the more senior people, then you less focus on the detail, right? For the more junior, you need to define more, uh, leading KPI, more detailed KPI. Okay, so come from, I think my, my understanding is come from a big, big, big picture, know the objective, set the KPI to measure it to achieve the key objective. Huh? Very good. I got one question here for you. Yep. How do you set KPI? Must, it, must KPI be realistic? Okay, uh, this this is uh, back to the fundamental. Uh, a lot of people know SMART, right? SMART, S-M-A-R-T. S stands for specific. You need to be very, very specific. Okay, you need to be specific. Uh, M is measurable. You have to be measurable. There are three ways to measure. You measure by number, by percentage, or by dollar. You choose one. There's only these three, okay? Number, percentage, dollar. Uh, S M A. Uh, air is attainable, has to be reasonable. So you don't set something that your people, you yourself don't believe. You set a vision, you yourself don't believe, it doesn't work. It just has to have a paper on the wall, right? So it had to be, uh, as uh, uh, relevant, had to be relevant to what the person's doing, relevant to what your company doing, and had to be time-based, as MRT, right? Okay, specific is very important, you know. i give you one example. There's one uh, company that's selling property, okay? The marketing director, I asked him, what is your KPI? He said, oh, okay, my KPI is to generate 100 new leads per month. Is it specific enough or not? No, not really. You know why? That's a loophole. For example, uh, one day I go to a showroom, okay? You need 100 leads, right? What your salespeople will do? They say, okay, Wilson, welcome, you know? Uh, I welcome your family to join this uh, showroom. Uh, I have a KPI, I need to collect names, you know? Can you ask your daughter, your, your, your son, your grandmother, your grandfather to print the form for me? I need 10 today. Yeah, I check my KPI. Yeah, yeah, I have 10 lists. I bought this in my list. But it got rubbish, right? Because it is not specific. In order to be specific, you need to spell it out. Okay, I need to have a lead between 40 to 60, for example. 40, 60, you know, or maybe married couple or investor income level, you know. You have to define that. If you don't define that, people will find loophole. Right, so need to be very, very specific. Okay, had to be realistic. Yes, yes, had to be realistic. Good, good. But, but sometimes business owners don't set realistic target. No, they set visionary target. <laughs> okay, but now I, I want to share. Let me to share one thing with you. Sure. I met a client before the MCO. I asked him, "What is your vision?" I always ask the customer, "What is your vision?" He said, uh, I want to be the world number one." Okay. Do you know how to achieve that? I don't know. Uh, do you know who are the competitors in the world? Uh, there are a lot, hundreds, thousands. Then how are you going to be number one in the world? I don't know, because the previous consultant asked me to do set, set number one, I said number one. Ah. Then what's the point you setting your vision as world number one? Then you yourself don't know how to achieve it, right? You have to set the vision that you yourself believe you can achieve it. You must know, you must have a strategy, you must have a goal to set, to benchmark, to measure it, then that is only real, uh, realistic vision. When your vision, when your vision is realistic, only your HOD believe in what you believe. If your HOD don't even believe in your vision, you can forget about your vision. That's my sharing. Very good. Or you can sell the HODs the vision, and they will buy it. Up. That's where I come in. So I think leaders <laughs> have to sell. Leaders have to sell. Uh, and and there are, I mean, based on this topic, right? Either you see it to believe it, or you believe it to see it, right? So big entrepreneurs they see things that normal human beings don't see, right? That's why they keep achieving things that 
normal human beings don't achieve. And mm. my question for everyone is, how many of you here are in business right now? You're a business owner. Okay? If you're a business owner, just type one. If you're not a business owner, please type two. Just quick survey. Because if you are a lot of business owners, I'll give you a business strategy today. If it's a lot of salespeople, I'll give you a sales strategy today. Okay, how many business owners are there? If you're a business owner, please type one in the comment. If you're not, if you're line line, please type two. Okay, so let's quick quick survey before I give you a quick strategy for today to take home. If you're a business owner, please type one. Not a business owner, type two. If you're a sales leader, GM, HR, if you're analyst, uh, please type two. Okay, we have some business owners. Lots of them actually. <laughs> because today we talk business topic, also all the business owners start coming. Tomato 10. Wow, your nickname very, very unique. Eh? Okay. A lot of business owners. Edward, Eddie, uh, Stephen. Okay, okay. These are all in my coaching, coaching programs. <laughs> Okay, fantastic. So I'm gonna I'm gonna share some thoughts today. Now, this um, afternoon I was consulting a public listed company. They are a chain of retailers. I cannot name you the brand, but they are retailers. They have a lot of outlets. And I'm gonna give you today a retail example. So I like case studies because we as consultants, trainers, and coach, uh, we do turnarounds and transformation. And in, in, this, in this case, I had to transform them because turn around simply means going down and it can boost a bit, go up. But now we have to transform them from something they are not to something they need, need to be. And this company has some challenges. Uh. Number one, because they are retailer, very traditional business. They open in malls, in shop lot and those kind of places and they and they wait for people to come in. And being a retailer, normally it's in the order taking mindset people come in what do you want you want x i give you x pay money smile gone so there are so many things that traditional retailers actually don't do share with you some number one number one is order taking instead of order taking we must move to order making now whether you are b2b or retailer is exactly the same thing right? b2b is people wait for inquiry wait for inquiry wait for inquiry also same thing right? wait for marketing wait for marketing wait for marketing marketing don't give me leads i don't know how to do prospecting so all this is the very traditional mindset which you are not going to survive if you keep on having this mindset i'm here to challenge you to change change the first the mindset then you change your business and sales model then only you implement new methods then you can produce new sales so continue with the story yeah. so retailers first of all order taking so right now I implement a new sales strategy and then new method. Retailers now must proactively approach customer. Problem number one, you can have three person in your store. Unlike those days, huh? well, flooded with people, you can serve many people, but now only three person can enter the store. Problem number one. Problem number two, there are queue out there. People waiting to scan QR code and write on the book with this germs based pen huh? to try to get into the, get into the store. And there's a queue out there and there's three person in there. So if you are a store manager, right, what are you going to do? Are you going to focus on the three person inside your store to upsell, cross-sell, to service, to explain the product benefits, or you are going to serve another three person standing outside your door? So in this case, right, the store managers like, don't know how to make decisions. You know what? Because never have this problem before. Now, last time Louis Vuitton different. Lah. Louis Vuitton, you have to stand outside the door by nature because <laughs> they're already practicing all these things already. <laughs> cannot so many people going scared, cannot control crowd and no exclusivity when it's like a sardine pasamalama. Right? So they're already practicing that. But now every retailer is going through this. We have no experience whatsoever. You just ask yourself, uh, if you are the store manager, what are you going to and if command your troops, the retail and supervisors? Are you asking them to Okay, since these three are already inside the store, so upsell them. Or it's like, wow, this guy only buy small item. Uh. I don't want to name the product also. Uh. So the boss, small item, uh, faster pay money, get them out of the store, and then get the new customer come in. What will you do? Now, that is where sales strategy and leadership comes in. 
And if you stand outside the door for too long, like what Alex say, ah, uh, ah, later, boss, ah, I just want to buy one small item, uh, make me wait, uh, and then after that, I, 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 when I drive by a, a mud, uh, I will go in and buy, and, and that's it. And then you will lose the, the business. This is all sales decisions that we have to make right now during COVID nineteen that nobody has ever dealt before, and therefore they need training, challenge themselves to change. Number one, second case scenario. Uh, because they're retailer, traffic is slow. People are not coming because there's no one going to the mall. There's social distancing, and then you get a gun pointing to your head every single day, you know, <laughs> before you enter the mall. <laughs> you go in, the owner's like, Hoo. so anyway. So everybody don't want to go. Now, because there's no traffic to the mall, how are you as a retailer going to increase sales? Now, I gave them this strategy. For me, I don't like waiting. I like working. And this has never been done by retailer before, especially the big one. Now. If you're one store owner, you, you guarantee do this one. But if you're a chain, you will never do it. Right. It's called door to door. Door to door means you get out of the shop, you move to a surrounding neighborhood, and you start promoting the business. Huh? Correct. This is breakthrough. This is a challenge. This is something that normal business will not do, but crisis must do. If not, buka kedai, tunggu orang datang, matilah mampus lah. So cannot have this kind of waiting mindset. Lah. Must have the working, working, working. Many people might think that this is outside the comfort zone because it's crisis. If we still do the same thing as before, comfort zone, we are going to exactly get the same result and worse because of no traffic. So door to door. Now, you may think, hey, this is retail example, Hanzo. I'm B2B. I'm project sales. I'm dealer selling. Same thing, one. Wait for inquiries. Business come. Uh, uh, emails come in. Marketing feed you leads. Rather than working for it, uh, door to door means what? Prospecting. Hunting for leads. This, yesterday, I did a program. The salesperson, I asked them, you use code wallet or not? Yes. How many you call? Oh, I call a lot. Uh. Okay. Call a lot is not a number. Uh. Like William say, like, like what you say. Uh. I call a lot. When people say call a lot, uh, I say die already. Right? What is the number did you call? Give me the number. He said 15. I said, huh? 15? Uh? 15 is a lot. Hello, uh. 15, you can do it in 30 minutes, you know, if nobody pick up your phone. You have one whole day to do the sales prospecting and yet only 15. So he like, hey, 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 like that. So I'm like, <laughs> you know what is the minimum standard if you want to hunt for new business? Huh? He said, don't know. I said, minimum standard is 100, 100 calls per day. That is where you are top level salesperson. They will never go hungry because you always are the hunter mentality. You know? Huh? 100? Ah? Challenge yourself. Ah! <laughs> and you're like, oh. so ladies and gentlemen, if your business is down and you're still having the fear of cold calling, scared people reject you. Ah, I think you better be scared. No cash in the bank account. Ah. I don't know what kind of fear is that of fearing that company slam down your phone. Or prospects slam down your phone and reject you. I think we need to learn from babies. If you have a kid, uh, just look at it as a motivation factor. No need to watch YouTube. Just look at your two-year-old baby. Uh, and you know what happens? Like my son, two years old, uh, the fellow never give up one. He come on, uh, they're like, hey, daddy working. Uh. You talk nicely. Uh. Don't work one. Uh. Then the fellow will go his thing and then come back again. Nen, 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 nen. Then after that, I say, then I start to grab already, right? Like, daddy working, you know? Daddy have to find money, you know? Then she's like, I don't give a damn what you say, man. I want my nan 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 So the face, the face super thick one. So after that, it's like, okay, let me go around, right? And you know what happened? Then after that, we angry with him, right? Parents are like, yo, little masa. Then the fellow will do it. Ah! Start crying, right? And you know what happens when they cry? They win. Parents all know this one. Then it's like, ah, okay, okay, lah. Give you whatever you want, lah. And then you give the milk. So, they get whatever they want. <laughs> okay? True what? Take face, persistence, never give up mindset. If a two-year-old can have this kind of mentality, why a 20-year-old, 30-year-old, 40-year-old, 50-year-old, 60 year old cannot do? We have to go back into the fundamental. Last point I want to share today is in this crisis, we have to go back into the social mindset. 
So Shin is a Japanese martial art uh, terminology. That means beginner's mind. So Shin is martial art term. La. We are coming from martial arts. Beginner's mind means what? You're no longer 25 years in business. You're no longer 15 sales uh, years of sales experience. You now have zero. You're no longer a 100 years old company. You are zero. You know why this mindset is important? Because if you don't have this mindset of starting from zero, you're going to be wiped out by people that's going to start from zero because they're hungry. That's why you see every crisis in the history always get disrupted by startup companies. Somebody is going to come from zero and then I'm going to try to innovate something to kill you. And these big companies are 100 years old can go bust one and all. So many already. Hertz is the latest story right now. 16,000 employees. Smart people working in a company. But died. Kodak died. Nokia died. So all these companies have unlimited resources. They can borrow any money from the bank. They got so many assets can pledge, but yet can still die. Why? Because don't have the social mindset. Startup mentality. So if we want to survive this crisis, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to challenge you that go from zero. If you want to start your business again, what are you going to do differently now? If you are a salesperson, go back into basic. If you are starting your new sales career right now, what kind of energy would you have? How many calls are you going to make? Who are you going to impress to get the job? But many senior sales people will go into complacent. Oh, selling for 15 years already, la, you know, 20 years already, la, don't really care. La. And that's why no sales. That's why when I recommend the door to door strategy to retailer, they got shocked, you know, they want to die, you know, almost cannot breathe. I almost want to do CPR over Zoom, you know, because they have never done it before. So this is the challenge mentality. Social mindset, start from zero. Go back into fundamentals. What is fundamentals? We buy necessities, correct? We don't buy luxuries, but we don't go suddenly go, go and go shopping for Rolex. <laughs> we go buy necessities, buy new uh, bread, uh, maybe some clothes that put already. Uh, we don't actually go into that kind of mode. So what is that? Social mindset, start from zero. Look at what is important in our life. Gratitude, happiness, health, social. In business, it's the same thing. Jaga all the most essential items and we can actually get out of this mess. And that is my challenge for us. So ladies and gentlemen, do three things. More, better, different. Do things more. If you make 15 calls, make sure you make 30 calls tomorrow. And do it better. Improve on the script and the skill set and challenge yourself to do things differently. And you can all get out of this crisis. In 2021, I'm going to invite all my customers into a giant ballroom hotel and I'm going to celebrate and my 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 speech is going to be like I survived 2020. So, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for coming. I want to play some links for you for today to take home one hour already. Gonna limit it because don't want to do too long. Okay, what we have to offer? We are all four professionals here, Charlie Makana. So we're going to give you some links. So these links will be channeled to respective programs. So the first one we have Lily providing you with financial consultants uh, for financial coaching on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Yes. Yeah. So Alex will paste the link. So that's on coaching. If you want to know how to cut, what to cut, that will be the right program for you. Number two, if you want to know how to raise funds, get cash without the banks, then William will be the perfect guy for you. So all of us do workshops. Now workshop means you have to work. Huh? <laughs> so that's called workshop. Okay, fundraising one June. There's a first of a June. So that's the link. And it will give you a perspective on how to raise more money. And you will learn more jargons like m and and equity, <laughs> which I learned many years ago, which is quite good, you know, to, to have this kind of knowledge that you can mix with almost anybody. Okay, so the link, uh, promo, 99 ringgit only for Lily's uh, coaching, 99 bucks. What can you do with 99 bucks? A dinner with your family or some skill sets to last you until 2020. That will be an important distinction, right? Next, we have KPI programs coming up by Wilson. This is an important program for 
company that don't know how to set KPIs, how to structure KPIs, and simply set KPIs. <laughs> so it's like linear, simply cut, simply cut. Lah. Cannot, lah. You must properly structure your KPI systems. That will be the workshop. We have pasted the link there. And lastly, will be my sites. I'm doing a program called the unconventional sales strategies. In there, got 20 sales strategies of how companies can restructure their sales department and challenge themselves to do things they have never done before. I see a lot of Mandarin words coming up. I'm so sorry. Was <laughs> Susing, <laughs> Soshin. Oh, Soshin is, oh, this is yeah. direct translation. Yeah. Soshin, direct translation. Soshin is spelled like that. Soshin is actually a Zen word. La. Martial art, Japanese martial art, all influenced by Buddhism one. So got Zen, Zen element one. A beginner's mind. You don't like to link with religion? Start up mind. Also start with S. Also, Bole one. Startup mentality. If you were to start a new company today, what are you going to do? That's going to disrupt the whole market. Like I want to start a new business right now. Okay, it's digital agency, and which I want to start from zero and disrupt the digital agency market. So that is social mindset. Start from zero. Okay, so that's my workshop. You can sign up. It's free of charge. It's a preview, lah. <laughs> okay, that we come in to share with you what the twenty strategy is all about. Uh, and you can make a decision to join, not to join. And then after that, we have the financial projection, instant financial cash flow projections, where tuck on a few buttons, you will know whether you can last until year end or not. Uh, very interesting. Okay. And also on KPI settings, I strongly believe in KPIs. You got to have that in place or else the company will be simply larry left and right. And lastly, for fundraising, you need more cash. You need to be connected with people who know how to raise funds. And if you want to have even more money into your company, you need to mix with people who knows how to get money. Lah. Okay. And no company ever tell the bank, ah, I have enough money. No company will ever tell, tell investor, don't put so much money into my bank account. I have enough. They will always raise more funds. That's why listed companies always issue more shares even though they already have tons of money. So ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have to offer to you today. Uh, please uh, rest, choose your respective links. You can sign up for all four if you want. And we will see you in our programs for breakthroughs, for, I, I, I mean, pivot, pivot is like a new word that everybody use. So I don't want to use that. I'll just say that. Survive this crisis first. Lah. Then only talk about pivot. Lah. Okay, many people can't even survive. You will see more and more. I just did a video on bubble tea. So many die. Already. Okay, so survive. After you survive, we can succeed. Ladies and gentlemen, that's my message. Any uh, guys, you got anything to say to the audience? Mr. Lily, ladies first. Okay, so I think my uh, my parting words would all uh, would be you know get your numbers uh, on track. Because when I was doing the financial projections, uh, many people actually numbers. Yeah, so I was wondering, mm, okay, how have you been managing your business? Because even if you drive a car, you were driving a car, you also got the car dashboard, you know how much petrol you have, how fast you're going when you service your car. So when you are driving a business and you don't have your financial numbers, that is the first time, I think the first thing that you need to put in, uh, you need to put in place. Uh, Driving a business must look at numbers, don't simply drive. Later, no petrol, also you don't know, or your business needs servicing, also you don't know. Yeah, so keep that in check, and that will also guide you to survive this through by really looking at your numbers. That's great. Look at numbers, huh? So, very, very important. Uh, let's, let's just now move with William. Yes, uh, I resonate with uh, Lily's comment. Start with the numbers because a lot of people, when they want to raise money, they don't know how much they actually need. Okay, so be very focused, be very accurate. Tell investor how you're going to spend their money. Okay, whether to expand, whether to to extend your production line. Okay, state it in a very clear format. The KPIs as well. Okay, the milestones. 
And then, of course, how to exit the investor because they only invest for one reason, not because they are cheap like Hanzo, but they want to make more money. Okay, all right, thank you very much. And Wilson? Ah, okay, so um, imagine uh, we are a group of friends here. I give you one address in Patu Baha. Okay, we all want to go to that direction, Patu Baha. I give you one address. Imagine uh, you do not have waste now today. Uh, how are you going to find that location, right? So if I give you a waste, we are driving from our, our home from different direction, but we're moving towards the same direction. Waste tell you to turn left, you turn left. When there is an accident, a jam, waste will tell you to avoid that road. Then you turn to the right, right? All turn together, turn left and left together, right? So if we, without the waste, we cannot know our direction, we cannot arrive the, at the same destination together. That is what we call KPI. When you have your direction every week, every time you have a new strategy, you keep trying new things, keep trying, trying, you try, feel, try, feel, try, feel, you keep changing. But if you are alone, doing that your employee not following you, you run very fast and you look behind, nobody behind you, then you're gone. So that's why you need KPI. You need people to follow you, right? Everything also important here. You need to look at the finance, you look at the look, look at the cash flow, uh, sales, KPI. So just talk to us. We are here to help SME. Okay. Uh, my my webinar on this Saturday is free. You just sign up for one and a half hour. I guarantee you can learn a lot of things there. Okay. No obligation. Don't worry. Okay. See you guys. All the best. Thank you. Okay, thank thanks. you, Hanzo, and thank you, the viewers. Bye. So I want to leave you with one more screen.